Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Cyber Trends webinar, Simplifying Cybersecurity Management, uh, sponsored by GBQ Partners, LLC, and Know Before. Now, I'd like to turn the call over to GBQ's Information Technology Director, D Doug Davison, to start today's webinar. We'll start with introductions here. Um, Durant, uh, just hid. He'll come back and, and do a, a greater part of the presentation. He's from one of our partners, Know Before. Some of you know them from the, the phishing and compliance training that, that um, they provide. Um, with us, too, is John Stewart, who um, is responsible for the work that we do with Know Before. Um, and we're pretty excited about sharing with you what we found uh, based on the, the reservations for the, the presentation. I know there's some old friends and clients here some referral partners, as well as the new people. Um, so what we want to do is talk a little bit about our, our cyber risk assessments, um, why we feel the uh, Know Before Compliance Manager is such a compelling story, and then let Durant show that off and, and wrap up at the end with any questions. We should have plenty of time for questions. And even though we've been doing this stuff for the last couple of years, um, people tend to get a little shy, but I encourage you to ask questions either about our process or about the Know Before product as we go. Um, Durant will answer questions during the demo um, if you have a question about any particular portion of it. So with that, I wanna speak to something that those of you that know us have probably seen. And our process is to assess, improve, and manage. Um, not unique to us, that's really the at, the, at the bottom line, what a good risk assessment process is. Um, we come in and assess risk. That may mean, depending on the organization, we assess your program. Um, we may do some penetration testing. We prefer to do that as uh, remediation testing to make sure things are corrected at the end. Um, but some, some firms need that up front. We can test uh, just about any control, whether it's affiliated with a control framework like NIST cybersecurity framework or the SIS controls, or uh, affiliated with a compliance framework like um, HIPAA um, or payment card industry or CMMC or some other um, compliance framework. We uh, can come in and look at just about any technology form factor that you have. In fact, one of the big pieces of a risk assessment is to look at all the assets that a firm has. And so when we come in initially, we pick a, a framework, um, we pick a set of tests based on the form factors, and then we take a look at the, the technology that the client has. Um, it looks, we look at that client inventory. Um, we produce at the end of it, those of you that have worked with us before, a risk register, um, which is a fancy term for a spreadsheet of our findings with all of our findings ranked by, by risk, um, likelihood and impact, um, critical to low, um, because we believe very firmly that you should, do, um, you should focus your efforts, time and treasure on your most critical and high risks, or maybe some low hanging fruit you wanna get to, but to be working in the middle of the risk list when there's critical issues um, is, is probably not the best use of funds and, and your time. And so we produce that risk register to help focus. Um, we take that risk register and work alongside of you to improve your, your either your team or to implement safeguards. A lot of that work may be work that you're doing on your own with your IT team or your managed service provider. And at some level, a lot of our clients are managing how that work gets done in the risk register. Um, we get a lot of that, those things done, um, those, those issues remediated. There's program management. Um, a lot of the clients that we work with have an ongoing committee. Uh, there are some compliance obligations that require that, some public entities, some um, nonprofits that have uh, boards of directors have requirements for regular reports to the audit committee. So there's a, a general flywheel regular monthly or quarterly meeting that that um, goes on for some firms. Um, we also at that last stage um, penetrate, uh, do penetration testing to ensure that the safeguards that were implemented have been done correctly. And then we have some clients that have stakeholders that have an expectation that um, there's some level of third party independent attestation that they're doing the right things. And so the team does SOC reporting as well. And the way the world works right now, most compliance obligations, most frameworks, um, an obligation that brings a SOC exam or some other kind of attestation or certification in 
is going to require us to do this all over again. And so the, the wheel repeats. And with that, I want to turn things over to uh, Durant from Know Before. We believe that the Know Before um, compliance management tool um, is superior to working in a spreadsheet and pushing spreadsheets back and forth. Sometimes all this work has to be done with third parties. And as he'll share, there's an ability to do that in, within the tool and not within a set of spreadsheets. Um, and then finally, I've personally worked with two or three of the GRC platforms that are in the market, and most of them are not accessible. Um, the cool thing about the Know Before Compliance Manager is it was created by somebody that has a, a, the job of many of you on the call, and they were frustrated with all of their time being spent answering third-party questionnaires and vendor res uh, responding to, to clients and vendors and built the tool and then know before saw a way to bring it out to the market. It's also very accessible from a pricing perspective. Some of these tools get into the six figures and that's not that's not the, the pricing model with know before. So it fits our model perfectly as Duran will show. Um, it's very accessible. Um, some of the tools that are inaccessible have a lot of training re uh, requirements. Um, John has is the one that's really doing on the keyboard with most of our work. And he was able to, with the first project, just jump in and immediately start working. Some of the competitors require a couple of weeks of training to start work. So with that, I'll hand it over to Durant. Um, John and I are going to um, log out of here and let Durant have the center stage. Thank you for the introduction. I will go ahead and share my screen. And you all should be able to see that. So let me minimize myself. That's a little weird looking at myself, but we'll go ahead and make this full screen so we can take a look. So my name is Durant Harvin. I am VP of KCM GRC Sales here at Know Before. Um, KCM is Know Before Compliance Manager. GRC stands for Governance, Risk, and Compliance. <clears throat> And so essentially what this tool is going to help you do is to essentially automate all the things that John just talked about. So um, our, we like to say that our number one competitor is spreadsheets, uh, to be completely frank. So we're just trying to take what you're manually pulling right now and give it to you in a more automated and streamlined format that also allows you to kind of have a bird's eye view of what's occurring across the organization as well. And so in its simplest form, uh, this tool is simply going to allow you to take a list of requirements, delegate activities to your different stakeholders internally in terms of what you need them to do to meet those requirements. Second, uh, the next piece is going to be you'll be able to collect evidence associated with those requirements, and then you'll be able to do that with frequency. So you can set that to be uh, set in a way that happens quarterly or monthly or annually, whatever it may be. And this system handles all the quarterbacking for you. So you won't have to have monthly meetings or weekly meetings to gather all this information. This tool is going to tell you when it's time to do what's next and then house all that information in one pretty package for you as well. Uh, so uh, what we'll do is kind of step through some workflows uh, at a high level. I obviously won't get into the weeds of it. I want you guys to take a look at what we can offer. And then obviously we can have a much more in-depth conversation case by case for your specific use case. Uh, so. The tool itself is housed in the Amazon cloud. Uh, you would not have to install anything on-prem. This is housed exclusively in the cloud. Uh, each organization gets their own instance of this platform. And so right now, what we're working out of is a demo instance of one of my sales reps. Um, the first thing that you'll see is our global dashboard. And so what this dashboard shows is essentially just a health check of all the different activities that you've assigned out within your organization. So not doing too well in our demo environment but i don't want this to scare you we do this demo four or five times a day uh for each rep so that's why this looks so crazy but your environment won't be nearly as busy but in short the scope health is going to reflect basically the number of activities that need to happen um and then how many of those actually happen so right now we're running out of about a 21 percent clip that's obviously not great uh, but we also give you a calendar that lays this out for you in a color-coded format and so this is going to lay out each compliance task that your organization is responsible for and the status of those tasks. And so to keep this super simple, anything that is red or yellow or orange, however that looks on your side, that basically means you're starting to fall behind. And so the advice I always give to my customers is if you start to see a lot of reds and yellows, 
you basically need to start jumping on people's necks. Hey, I need you to catch up. I need you to bring these things up to speed. Um, part of this platform is that we also give you email notifications as well. And so you won't have to come into this tool to take a look at this. We can actually notify you via email, hey, this is falling behind. And there's trigger points where if it falls too far behind, it actually gets triggered to the next level. Hey, you're the approving manager. By the way, this thing that you were supposed to approve never got handled. So that was a long-winded way of me saying that we handle the notifications. You're not going to have to go running around having meetings and long email chains to try to gather this information. Once you set up these tasks, the system takes it from there. Uh, another cool piece of this dashboard is that you can also filter this by a particular what we call scope, but for you all, let's just call them frameworks. So right now we're looking at every single one of these frameworks in one swing. But let's say I only wanted to see this from the lens of CIS critical security controls as an example. We'll click that. And as you can see, there's not a lot of activity here. I don't have any task associated with this, but basically this allows you to filter this view by the specific project that you're working out of rather than everything that you're working on as from a compliance standpoint. We have a lot of organizations that manage multiple frameworks within this tool, so that comes in handy. Uh, perfect, so from there, we'll talk about how we can populate this particular platform, right? And so everything starts off as what we call a template. And so templates are pretty simple. It's just basically the different frameworks that you're gonna operate out of. So whether that be NIST or SOC 2 or ISO, I know there's a big focus on SOC for you all. So we'll use that as an example. So let's search SSA 18, here we are. And we'll use that particular template. Uh, we actually provide these requirements pre-built into our system. Anytime something changes within them, we update them on your behalf as well, because they're one of our managed templates. But we do give you the ability to customize your own. So if there's a set of requirements or a set of controls that you want to align yourself to that we don't have, we're not going to handcuff you to our list. You can bring your own to the table. We have about 40 that we have pre-built into the system that are basically the most popular ones. But again, if you want to bring your own to the table, you can do that as well. And so essentially from here, what you'll have is just the templated requirements. So these are all the SOC 2 requirements that are up to date. And again, our team keeps up with these. What you'll do is convert this to what we call a scope. And so scopes are essentially projects. This is where you start to do your work. And so your first step within a particular scope is we're gonna lay out each requirement and description. So uh, we're gonna ask you to do a self-assessment. It's gonna be really, really good for you all to kind of figure out where you stand currently. Um, it's my understanding that you all do something like this currently, uh, but we, we're just trying to, again, bring this all into a streamlined and organized format. And so we'll have you go through each requirement and description and you'll start to identify what you've met, partially met, not met, and what's not applicable. And you can start to sort this list based on these responses as well. But this will kind of give you a quick game plan of, all right, where are the gaps that we have? What are some of the low hanging fruits that we can attack? And what are the things that we don't want to spend any funds on because they're not applicable to our organization? So that would be your first step is just to go through your self-assessment. From there, what you'll do is once you get your requirements set up, you'll actually click into a particular requirement. And so I just wanna make sure we're having the same conversation in our platform, a requirement is what's expected and a control in our platform is what you're doing to meet that expectation. Sometimes people flip flop those terms across the industry, but I just wanna make sure we're having a, a, the same conversation. A requirement in this tool is what's expected, a control is what you're doing to meet the expectation. And so once you click into a requirement, it's going to give you a full description of what's expected. So you'll get the entity maintains, monitors, and evaluates current processing capacity, and so forth and so on. I won't read all of that for you. Something cool that we do in our platform that we rolled out earlier this year is we provide control guidance. And so uh, what this will allow you to do is essentially, if you're starting off brand new with a particular requirement, we'll give you a suggestion of how we would go about meeting this requirement as well. So that's where the guidance comes into play. And it'll also give you an, uh, some advice around what type of evidence to pull as well. So that's something that our internal GRC team has assisted us with. From here, uh, you have a few options. So again, we have the requirement of what's expected. We have a suggestion of how we go about meeting that expectation. Now it's time to put in place what you're actually going to do. So you have a few options. You can create a control from scratch. So that would allow you to actually click into the control. 
You'll name it, provide a description. We we'll give you the guidance here on the right hand side. And you can kind of tweak this to your liking, whether this be a, we'll call this a test. And the description would just be your statement of compliance. And then you'll create as an example. Uh, a lot of you, if you're going to be working with John and his team, you'll already have a lot of your controls kind of laid out. So what you'll be able to do is simply upload those controls in bulk into the system. And from there, you'll simply do a mapping exercise. And so mapping essentially allows you to jump into a requirement and simply say, hey, I think I've already met that requirement. I want to map to the existing control that already is in place. So you'll search by name and description for what you're looking for. So let's say for the sake of conversation, this is what I was looking for. I'll select that control map it save it and as you can see that uploaded asset has already been connected to this requirement so that's going to be a majority of you once you start working with john and his team on this effort from here what you'll do and this is where you can really start to automate the process uh, you build your control associated with the requirement and pretty simply you'll create a task and so the task is going to allow you to say, all right, who's responsible for this on my team? So this is going to be a drop down menu of your team. So I'm going to assign this to Angela. You'll select the type of evidence you want to require, because obviously you want to start to collect the documentation proving that you've done these things. So you'll select whether you want a document or a link. Uh, the link allows you to house your evidence on your end, whether you have Dropbox, SharePoint, Z Drive, whatever you use on your end, you can house your evidence there or you can upload the documents directly into this tool. That's entirely up to you. We do give you unlimited storage. So we'll use link for the sake of conversation. Then you'll select your frequency. So again, remember I talked about doing this with frequency as part of what this tool provides you. So you can select how often do you want this to happen? Uh, so let's say we do this on a semi-annual basis. I wanna make sure I have two pieces of evidence a year. And you'll pick a due date. We'll kick this off on November 30th as an example. And then the last step would be an approving manager. So who do you want to be able to look over the shoulder to make sure this looks good? So I'm going to look over to Angela's activities and that's going to allow them to notify me once she completes her step. And then that triggers another layer of approvals. If you want to use it, it's not required. Uh, so let me make a pit stop here at the integration point. So we do have two integrations with this platform. We integrate with JIRA. Uh, so that allows you to assign tasks within KCM, but they can be completed within JIRA. Uh, so that allows your security team to not have to come outside of JIRA to complete these tasks. They can live right where they're comfortable. And we also uh, integrate with our security awareness training platform. Uh, so that automatically pulls any training evidence into this platform as well. Uh, but from here, we'll simply create that task. And that essentially kicks off that semi-annual task review. And so you can see that pops up right away. An email notification will be pushed out to the user that this was assigned to. And in that email will be a hyperlink and a brief description of what's expected. Uh, but that hyperlink is gonna bring them into the platform. And so once they click into that hyperlink, this is what they're going to see. They're gonna see a high level overview of what's expected. Again, this is the description of the task. Here's what's expected of you. They'll be able to see the timeline of when this is expected to be handled, as well as the approval chain. Ultimately, what you want from them is to provide the evidence proving that, yes, this did indeed happen. And so, as you can see, they can't complete this task until they provide some sort of evidence. That red line is not going to go away until they provide the evidence that you're looking for. And in this case, I selected a DocuLink, so they have to provide a link before this stops being grayed out. So once they're ready to add in a link, they'll simply create link. They'll name that piece of evidence. They'll provide a link as to where that evidence lives. For the sake of conversation, I'm just gonna use the link that we're in, but again, this should point to wherever this lives on your end, Dropbox, SharePoint, G Drive, whatever you're using. And then you'll create that piece of evidence. And so now that that is in place, they can come in and complete the task. And now that initial user's job is done. That is all they have to do is provide the evidence that you asked for. Now, what that triggers is an email to be sent to the approving manager. Same process. They get an email with a hyperlink saying that this is available for their approval. They'll come in, take a look at all the information that was provided. And then ultimately, they can take a look at the evidence as well. They can open this piece of evidence in a new tab or they can download it if it was a document entirely up to them. In short, they'll make a decision of either approving this or marking it as insufficient. If they mark it as insufficient, that kicks it back to Angela. 
And all we recommend is leveraging the net, the note section here in the top right corner to identify exactly what you need them to change so that there's not a lot of telephone being played to get this rectified. But if all looks good, approve it, save it. And that takes care of that particular task. And so again, to recap at a bird's eye view, this is essentially how you would go through your SOC 2 efforts. You would identify your self-assessment against those requirements start to document what exactly am i doing to meet those requirements and then you'll assign those activities out and then collect evidence in one seamless fashion so that's essentially at a bird's eye view uh, our compliance piece of the platform um, and that that falls directly in line with what john and his team is doing right now anyway uh, any questions that i can address right now let me check the um chat real quick okay and i think we're okay so uh from here we'll keep pushing so the policy management section uh policy management i'm not sure how many of you all are current know before customers but this is basically identical to what we have on the security awareness training side uh the policy management platform allows you to create campaigns and distribute your policies to all of your end users and collect their acknowledgement so let's say you roll out a new acceptable use policy you'll be able to create a campaign, we'll call this acceptable use. You'll select your start date and time. Uh, you'll pick your end date, or maybe this is a relative duration, so maybe you want this to keep going on an ongoing basis. Uh, and then you'll select what policy you actually wanna push out. So we'll make this the acceptable use policy. You'll select the group of employees you wanna push this out to, whether that be all employees or maybe a certain subset that you wanna push this to. And then pretty simple, you'll create that campaign and that allows this system to send the policy to all of those users in that group and basically ask them to read and acknowledge it, read and acknowledge the policy that you've pushed out. And then we'll give you the reports that actually lays out who did and did not do those items. So let's say we take a look at this report, uh, pretty blank here, this is the demo environment, but long story short, this is the type of information that you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see the user acknowledgement activity, uh, we'll give you the percentages as well and if you want to dive a bit deeper you can even take a look at the specific users to see what happened with them as well uh, so that's the crux of our policy management aspect uh, the other piece here that's really important is that we also have policy templates and so these are pre-built policies that you can download and tweak to your liking so for any organizations that are starting to build their policy library this would be great uh, we have about 25 different policies and plans, uh, ranging from acceptable use policy to disaster recovery plans and things of that nature. Uh, what you'll be able to do is simply, again, download these. We'll take a look at one just so we can see it. And we've done all the heavy lifting for you in terms of what this policy entails. And so basically, we've done all the technical writing. All you'll need to do is do a find and replace across organization name and your company, obviously. And so you can tweak these to your liking. Again, uh, you can download these and add whatever information you want to them. But we wanted to make this super simple for your organization to be able to build your policy library as fast as possible. Um, and the big feedback that we were hearing was that it was very hard for them to write the technical jargon. So we did that on your behalf. So that's going to be a piece of what we can provide as well. So from a policy management standpoint, that's essentially what we can deliver. Uh, from the next piece of the platform, it's gonna be risk management. And so uh, to, based on what the, the, the introduction was, uh, this falls right in line with what you all are looking for from a risk register standpoint. Uh, again, we're just trying to bring you all out of spreadsheets and try to make this super simple. So the first step is gonna be, we actually have a wizard. The wizard is based on the NIST 800-30 framework. Um, and it, we, what we've done is basically categorize different risk for you to select from. So if you don't have a risk register in place, we can get one in place for you literally in minutes. And so we'll start with advanced for the sake of conversation. You'll click into that particular uh, level and we'll categorize these different risks, business and strategic, environment to a natural, operational and infrastructure, compliance, and then you can also bring your own to the table as well. Uh, so business and strategic, again, we'll give you a bunch of risks that you can select from. If you click into the name, it'll give you the full description of what's expected there. And then you'll start to select what's applicable to your company. And so we'll select a few there. 
we'll move on to environmental and natural. This would be tornadoes, hurricanes, things of that nature. Uh, just to make it, again, super simple, we're based in Florida, so we'll use hurricane as an example. And you guys kind of get the, the crux here. Uh, you'll basically go through each, each category and select what's applicable to your organization. Now, uh, when we talk about custom risk, uh, we don't want to handcuff you to the risk that we provide. Again, we provide those because a lot of organizations don't have anything. Uh, we want to give you something to work with, uh, but you can also bring your own to the table. So similar to what we did in the compliance section, you can use what we provide or you can bring your own or you can do a hybrid of both, entirely up to you. So if you have your own risk, you can import those via CSV file or you can create these risks from scratch one by one. That's entirely up to you. The last thing we'll ask you to do is to simply confirm the risk that you want to add to your risk register. If you don't want something, pretty straightforward. Click on the green button, takes it off the list. If you do want it, leave it green, and then we'll hit confirm. And then we'll develop your risk register. And so all of your risk will populate in these different categories. These can be customized to your liking. That's entirely up to you unless you just go through our wizard, but you can add your own categories as well. But let's say I wanted to view all risk as an example. So this is gonna lay out every single risk in your environment. You can sort this by date created. Uh, you can sort that by the number of controls associated with it. Um, part of what we do in this risk platform is we actually have a scoring system as well. So let's say we click into a particular risk. We'll go to update this. On the back end, once you click into a risk, you can actually start to make some tweaks of your liking. So you can change the risk name, the description, you can add in consequences, who owns this risk, the affected assets. Uh, you can also tweak the categories as well. So the category, the subcategory, maybe you wanna add this into something specific. Uh, you can change the status of a particular risk as well. Is this something that you're avoiding? Is this something that you've accepted? Or maybe you've closed this risk out, entirely up to you. And then we also have this item called tags. And so tags is something that we are adding throughout the platform, uh, but it started off in compliance and risk management. And so tags allows you to group like items. And so some people use tags for departments, some people use them for locations. Some people have even used it for assets as an example. It just gives you a way to report on things in a group format. Uh, so let's say we add a tag to this. We'll add this to the admin team as an example. And then the next piece here is going to be likelihood and impact. So this is going to dictate your risk score, basically your inherent risk score. So what is the starting point for this risk? So let's say the likelihood of this risk occurring is unlikely. But the impact, if it did occur, was catastrophic. You can see there's changes to that score. We have our own scoring system. I'll be sure to provide some supporting documentation after the call that can be sent out that explains the details. But in short, this is going to be your starting point. What is the likelihood that this is going to happen? And what impact is this going to have on your organization? And let's say we start this off with an inherent risk score of 39, as an example. And we'll save that. And so with that inherent risk score, obviously the residual risk score hasn't moved because we haven't put anything in place to mitigate this risk. And so that's where your controls come into play again. So this is gonna work exactly the same way as what we did in compliance. You can either create a control from scratch or you can map to an existing control, including what you're doing from a SOC 2 standpoint in the compliance section, because these two worlds are gonna overlap pretty well. The only additional step is that you'll add a treatment score, and that's gonna be how we quantify how much the risk is gonna drop from a residual standpoint. So let's make a, let's use an example. Let's say I put a control in place to mitigate this risk. And so I'm gonna say mitigating activity. We'll put a description. I'm just gonna put stat for the sake of conversation. Let's say we add a tag to it for the sake, and, oh, sorry, close that on me. We'll do test, test, and we'll say the treatment score on this is going to be a 10 for the sake of conversation. You create that control, and as you can see, that populates right away. So it's simple subtraction. It's going to be inherent risk score minus total treatment scores results in your residual risk score. And so in short, this piece of the platform is gonna be a very simplistic way to build your risk register and then start to identify what you're doing to mitigate those risks in a quantifiable way. And we'll give you a dashboard that breaks this down across the organization as well.
So you'll be able to see your top risk, your riskiest tags. As you can see, that starts to come into play there. We give you a heat map that lays out the differences of your risk uh, over time. And then we'll also give you a risk category overview. So again, just a bird's eye view, view of what we can do from a risk management standpoint, a very simplistic way to build your risk register and start to identify what you're doing to mitigate those risks as well. So that's risk management. Uh, the last piece here is going to be vendor risk management. And this was mentioned on the front end. Uh, basically, what are you doing to uh, kind of identify what your third party vendors are doing to, uh, you know, not put your company in harm's way. So what we created was a very simple due diligence platform. So this tool allows you to essentially build questionnaires, distribute those questionnaires to your different vendors, and then collect that information in one centralized location. And so your first step is to actually build your questionnaire. So let's say we call this a critical vendor questionnaire. We'll make this public and we'll just put a test here for the description. You have a few options in terms of building questionnaires here. You can import these questions from CSV file. So if you already have a questionnaire that you'd like to send out, you can import that in. Uh, you can build the questionnaire one by one here. Even if you want to keep it custom, you can do that one by one. And a more popular route is that we actually have questionnaire templates that you can leverage internally. So uh, we have the SIG, we have we have the SIG, and we have the CAIQ. And so the SIG is like the standardized information gathering. Um, and these are very common vendor questions that people use all the time. But you can see that these questionnaires can get pretty lengthy. Uh, it's SIG full is 1,500 questions. Uh, we don't require you to use them all. So let's say hypothetically, you just wanna build your own questionnaire, but you don't wanna use all 1,500 questions. We've broken this down by category and you can go through and pick which categories are important to you. So maybe you wanna use the entire asset management section. You'll simply select those specific questions and add them to your questionnaire. So you can, again, you can either use what we provide or you can customize your own, or you can do a combination of both. That's entirely up to you. So that's your first step is to figure out what do I actually wanna ask my vendors? So I've added 15 questions to this questionnaire. Your next step is to actually provide a point value for each one of these questions. So part of what we do from a vendor management standpoint is each vendor is going to get a score based on how they respond to this questionnaire. and it's and it's scored just like any test you took in school. It's gonna be based on the number of points available and how many points did you score um, against those points that were available. And we'll give you the percentage that's gonna be their score. So let's say hypothetically I make, you can go through each question and make each one worth a certain amount of points if you want. But for the sake of conversation, we're just gonna make each question worth 10. So we don't have to go through all those steps. And so this questionnaire is now going to be out of 150 points. And so to continue that conversation, let's say someone scored 100 out of 150. That basically gives them roughly a 66% score on this particular questionnaire. So that would be their score in this platform. But this is your first step is to build your questionnaire and set your point values. From there, what you'll do is actually import your vendors into the tool. And so your vendors you can import them via CSV file. All we need is the vendor name, the contact name, and the contact email who is actually gonna receive the questionnaire from this system. And so each vendor will actually get their own login into this tool. It won't cost you anything, won't cost them anything. It's just our way of keeping things secure. Um, and they'll be able to come in and basically uh, complete any questionnaires you've assigned to them. They won't be able to see any of your other efforts here on the left-hand side. All they'll be able to see are the questionnaires that they've been assigned. They won't even know what their score is internally on your end. Uh, so all they can do is complete the questionnaires and provide evidence of their answers as well. So this will be your first step is again, get your question, get your vendors into the tool. Once you actually get them into the platform uh, and they complete a questionnaire, you'll be able to see some basic information about that, that vendor. So you'll be able to see the contact name, email. Uh, you can also add in some additional information. So what types of data do they have access to? The status of that vendor. You can start to add in notes associated with that vendor. And then here's where that score comes into play. So this vendor's doing pretty well. They have an 86.6% score. Um, so from here, let's say you wanted to assign a questionnaire out to a vendor. You'll simply select the questionnaire you wanna push out and you'll hit send questionnaire. 
And so frequency comes into place here as well. Again, we want to try to automate this as much as possible. So let's say we select this to be on a annual basis. That essentially tells KCM, hey, I want you to send this questionnaire every single year on this date to this vendor. And you don't have to lift a finger to do that. The system will automatically do that for you. And then you'll simply schedule that out. So super simple to get questionnaires out. Once the vendor actually completes the questionnaire, you'll be able to come in and take a look at what the vendor actually provided. So let's say we take a look at the vendor's questionnaire and these are the answers they gave us. You'll be able to come in, see the answers they provided. If there was a piece of evidence provided, uh, there will be a little download link here. You'll be able to download that piece of evidence, take a look at it. And then on the back end, you can start to make adjustments to their score. So let's say they got a zero out of 50, but um, maybe you felt better about, uh, well, the evidence wasn't that bad. I'll give them a 10. And you can update their score that way on the back end so that it, it's, a, it's basically showing up in their score appropriately. Um, also, something cool here is that you can also create an issue. So let's say hypothetically a, a vendor responds to something and you have questions about it. Rather than having to go outside of the platform, you can create an issue and basically say, hey, I need more information. You'll select a priority level. Let's say this is high priority as an example, and then you'll save that particular issue. And what that does is it notifies the vendor within this platform that, hey, you have something that you need to answer to for the customer that you responded to that questionnaire for, and you guys can go back and forth within this platform. So that's essentially how the review would operate within this platform. Uh, but let's backtrack for a second. So for those of you that are already doing some of these processes, maybe you already have due diligence packages or SOC 2 reports for your vendors. So instead of you having to go re-ask for those, quest those questionnaires to be filled out, maybe you just want to drop the document here in this environment. That way, everything's in one place. So we do have an attachment section that you can add in MSAs or SOC 2 reports or due diligence reports. That way, everything's in one location and you can find everything in one spot. And the last piece here is going to be simply a dashboard. And this is going to lay out all of your vendor management efforts in one location at a high level view. You'll be able to see your vendor scores so that you can see how many of your organizations are doing well and not so well, uh, the status of those different vendors, any outstanding issues that are out there, you'll be able to see those, and then any outstanding vendor questionnaires as well. So you can start to figure out how many of these questionnaires do we need to attack, um, how many have been completed, and so forth and so on. Um, and so, I will stop talking for a little while and try to open it up for uh, questions that I may have already missed, but let me try to pull this up for you guys. See the chat. If we have our, all right, so let me start here. Uh, if we have our own policies, can we implement them here? Yes, absolutely. So you can bring your own policies into the tool. Um, we've had two different um, use cases for that. So some people want to use their own policies to distribute to their employees. That's fine. And then some people actually want to maintain their policies within the platform as well. Uh, what we would do for that is essentially follow the compliance workflow uh, where you would essentially go through your list of requirements and delegate activities out. But instead of requirements, we would basically list out your policies and then you would sign out who's responsible for maintaining that policy, whether that be on an annual basis, a quarterly basis, and the evidence would be simply the updated version of that policy. Uh, but that's a that's a use case that we can talk about on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, does, the, does the risk go away if my residual risk score is zero? So we actually don't allow you to take a residual risk score to zero. In our eyes, a risk is never completely gone. So the lowest you can go is one. And that was all the questions that I saw. So I'm happy to pass this back over to the team and uh, we can wrap this up unless there's any additional questions. Happy to address anything. There we go. Kiria, you want to give me the control so I can close out on that last slide? So um, it does seem like we're going to give everybody a few minutes back. I know this life of online living, that's a good thing. Um, I just wanted to close out. There, In all reality, there may be some of you 
that the spreadsheet life is fine. A smaller organization that doesn't have a lot of complexity, maybe uh, know before compliance manager or another GRC tool is not right for you. Um, we have a number of our clients that the, the, what started all this, a number of our clients were coming to us and saying, we're doing this risk assessment every year and we forget to do things. We don't have things calendared. You're coming in and finding some of the same problems year to year. Um, how can how can we do this better? In some cases, clients are saying, can you take our program? And so we um, are working with a few clients where we're actually operating the security program, John is, um, for the client um, and making sure that calendar is being met, coaching the client through the control mappings and the vendor risk management setup, and then operating that in the background. Other clients are saying, we want to operate it. And we understand the, the complexity right now we're not getting some things done in the spreadsheets and um, we want to uh, manage some of this and really meet the calendar expectations a little bit better. And so that's allowing us to help get that set up. And then when we come in and do our third party work, actually dive deeper, we still do the technical testing, but we're auditing or um, verifying in other ways some of the controls that are in place rather than just doing an inquiry based assessment. So it's helping us develop even more rigor when we come in and look at the clients that are that are running their program with the tool set. Um, encourage as, as you, we all talk over over the next few months or or here as we approach the end of the year, your security plans for next year, talk about whether this fits into your model and, and maybe simplifies life a little bit. We are seeing a lot of firms be driven by their insurance carrier to third party risk management and that done in a spreadsheet with a significant book of vendors is a very difficult, expensive element. And just that alone, um, we, we believe this positions people really well to be a little bit more efficient as they've simplified that program. And then finally, the control frameworks we work with are in here, the actual risk assessment process. Durant mentioned this 830, um, the risk register that we've traditionally delivered to you all, and that many of you are running your security programs out of a spreadsheet um, is built into this. Um, the big thing when we come in and do a, a, a response, um, somebody's had a security event, somebody's failed to meet a vendor or a client or a customer or a client requirement, it's usually a problem with the calendar. And so the security calendar sounds simple, but a lot of the automation and the calendaring that keeps us all on track is a great value in terms of this tool. So Durant, thanks for joining us. Um, I don't know, are there any following, following questions? I, I, see one, one yeah, I see one. Of, you know, John, you're working with the NIST CSF mostly in this, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. We we, we tend to, to, to lean more toward NIST than, uh, than this is. So with that, everybody get some time back. Um, enjoy the Columbus weather. Durant, we're all jealous here in Florida because um, it's cold <laughs> but thank you for joining us uh, my pleasure and if anybody has any questions please don't hesitate let let doug know let john know and we'll be happy to jump on the call with you guys thank you all for your time thanks everybody